my main goal is the conversion rate to be lifted to 75 percent so that's on my computer every day and that drives me to make sure we're doing all the right things to secure listings above other agents and satisfy vendors you're listening to elevate the official podcast of elite agent for real estate industry sales professionals property managers and leaders with thanks to our partner connect now elevate brings you the best tools thinking and strategies to elevate your results to get access to all of elite agents premium resources including a detailed episode guide for this podcast visit joineliteagent.com and for more information about how connect now can make moving easier on your clients visit connectnow.com.au Welcome to another episode of the Elevate podcast, where we delve into some of the most interesting minds in business and in real estate for the very best tips and strategies for you to implement to elevate your business. I'm Elevate podcast producer Cass Charlesworth, and I'll be hosting today's show. My guest today needs little introduction. As a partner at PPD Real Estate in Sydney, he is widely regarded as the top residential salesperson in Australia, and last year received the 2020 area, the New South Wales Residential Salesperson of the Year. Welcome to the show, Alexander Phillips. Thanks, Cass. Thanks for having me. Thank you for joining us because I know I'm one of possibly, is it 900 calls you make each week from what I understand? So I must be call number 450. So we're going to jump straight in today and cut to the chase. Yep. Um, are you ready to go? We'll do some rapid fire questions. I'm ready. Okay. Now you were named New South Wales Residential Salesperson of the Year after selling 182 properties in 2020. As the lead agent, there were more where you were the secondary agent as well. Mm-hmm. That's a high volume in a prestige market, um, which is Sydney's east, inner city, city fringe. What key strategies do you use to achieve results like that? Um, it's obviously been 20 years of compounding uh, growth and you know, getting, getting uh, better every year and obviously trying to stay ahead of the competition and staying ahead of the, the marketplace as well. It's actually understanding that general market and, and understanding what vendors are looking for and progressing vendors. I think that's what we do really well is, is get as, as many vendors on the market as soon as possible, as sooner than what they're thinking, which will na- enable them to go into the next part of their life, whatever they're doing, upgrading, downsizing or you know, moving further afield. Um, most of it does come down to our work ethic, um, our you know, strategies for each property. Like we've got a clear process of strategies. We brainstorm each property. Um, we're, we're high, um, you know, touch points in communicating, and, and the team around me allows me to do that. Like everyone talks, that they've got a great team. I don't think we, I don't think anyone can, can say they've got a better team than myself. And most of them have been with me for five to ten years, which is quite some time. And I understand how we all work. And you know, we don't. You know, I had a meeting with Prue, my EA today. He's been with me for ten years, and. She, and, and we're talking about what she likes about it here. She goes, I don't see it as work. Like, I, I don't want to not get up out of bed. So, you know, we're, 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 we're energetic. Um, we enjoy what we do because every deal is different and every, every day is different. So it, it's, 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 a, it's a high-paced job, but, you know, I think it comes down to the passion for what we do. How do you maintain that balance? Because, as you said, there's a high work ethic, but there's also a sense of fun. And Prue mentioned she loves what she does. So how do you balance that? Um, it's about having pre-planned uh, your year in place. Like last year, no holidays, you know, but we were in the office like every single day. But I cut down on working Sundays. I didn't, you know, I, I um, ensured that I left the office earlier. Um, you know, there was, there was a lot of things that we could still look forward to. So it's sort of adapting. Like this year, we're doing extra long holidays because of the last two years that we've had off. So I look at what I need to do for the next 10 weeks before I go to Europe in April, um, that, that, that in itself motivates me. So I think it's the balance comes down to um, ensuring that you do have an out of real estate balance. And that comes down to obviously having a good friends, partner. Um, you know, I leave my phone at home when I go out for dinners and whatnot. So, you know, you do switch off maybe for an hour, but at least it's an hour. That's important. And actually, there were two things you've just mentioned there that I'd like to touch on. One is um, compounding. You mentioned this, I think, um, previously at ARIC. So when you say that you compound of the results of the year prior, what do you do at the beginning of the year in order to ramp up the strategy for the following year? Well, well, it actually starts at three months before. So it's in October, November. We start pre-planning and getting everyone ready for that um, January, February marketplace. I think uh, we've I think we're on about eighteen sales so far for the year, and it's not even you know mid January yet. So we we got we had properties on the market from you know the fifth of January, and um, you know we we, were, we had 
a really good pipeline of vendors because we, when your market starts slowing down at the end of the year, we, we, we do slow down in our sales, but we ramp up, you know, the conversations with getting vendors on the market sooner rather than later. And as the market, you know, starts coming off, which it is, um, it's a very easy conversation to say to the marketplace, sell high early in the year and buy low later in the year, and you can make a 10%, 15% gain, which is actually where we believe this year will actually you know, move to is, you know, the, all the trends are downwards and, you know, um, you know, at least a 10 to 15% decline. We're starting to see that already. So, you know, you can actually, you know, everyone says buy and sell in the same market, but you can actually, you, you can make up 10 or 15% because you've sold in a better market, bought in a worse market. Can you walk me through exactly how that conversation might go with a vendor? So you're on the phone to them and you're suggesting sell sooner. Yeah, you're on the phone, you're sitting in front, in front of them. You know, you've got a house worth two million. You want to buy a house for four million. Um, if the whole marketplace comes off, you know, ten percent as a year goes on, will you sell your place for two? Try and secure a four to six month settlement, so you know how much money you've got, and you can just wait. You know when when you start seeing it, you know coming off. Which generally, you know, what we're seeing is this year, probably month by month, you'll see a slight change downward. That that property that was four million by the time you hit April could be now three point six, where you're four hundred grand ahead. So and then you can marry up the settlement, um, or you might do what we call a floating settlement, where you might, you know, because yeah, you, know, you might try and do like anywhere from between three and six months. But you get to call on the settlement with six weeks' notice. So you gives that vendor, you know, what, what vendors don't want to be is left homeless with kids, families, work life, and it gives them that flexibility of when to buy and, and when to when to settle. So it's it's about that's more of an advisory service role than a stock standard real estate agent. I think that's a differential as well. Like you're giving, you're following the the economic market and you're going, okay, this is what is more than likely going to happen this year. No one can ever tell you exactly, but this is why you would do it now. Yeah, I was going to mention that. That is more an advisor, and it's also about knowing what their ultimate goal is, I imagine, what they're hoping to achieve with the sale of a property and beyond. Yes, exactly. I'd like to talk about goals, which you mentioned earlier. So you set, you have firm goals that you stick to, but I also understand that you have a list of goals that you read each day. Is that correct? It's our hit list each day of what properties to sell this week, what listings to secure. I've got the goals, you know, my monthly goals on my computer, like, you know, how much uh, we want to, you know, millions we want to sell and um, the amount of sales. But I also have a yearly goals. That, you know, my, my number one goal this year is actually read that weekly because then it, you can write down these goals and you don't look at them for a year. You, they sort of go out um, the door quickly. Um, our number one goal is that like, we convert – uh, 66% or a bit less than of all the appraisals we do. So we, we would sort of one in three we miss, which is, you know, high-ish, I would say. It's, you know, it's not too bad. But the, my main goal is, is a conversion rate to be lifted to 75%. So that's on my computer every day. And that drives me to make sure we're doing all the right things to secure listings above other agents and satisfy vendors. That makes sense. And it's the reverse engineering. You know that appraisal number needs to be high in order to get the listings yeah. to get to get the volume. Let's talk about the way you use the telephone because, I'm, again, at Eric a couple of years ago, I think you mentioned you make about 900 calls on average a week. Is that still something you continue to, to do? It's slightly less because I've seen to be out of the office a lot more now because our appraisals numbers are – last year we did 780 appraisals. So that's – you know, if you divide that by, say, last year was probably really, you know, 48 weeks – um, you know, that's why well, I can't, I'm not good at calculations, but you know, you like each appraisal is an hour essentially. So, you know, even today I've got six, so that's six hours. So I'm out of the office for six, but the whole time I'm in the car making calls to, to the database. Or, you know, we sold a property in Bondi yesterday, so we're calling the surrounds, you know, in the database. So the the call, it, call, it calls are still very high, like they're probably six to seven hundred a week, but. More so, not so much in the office, out of the office, because we're out, you know, probably 70% of the time now. So let's talk about the structure of your day, because in order to make six or seven appraisals a day and also complete that volume of calls, how do you how do you set up your day to achieve things? Well, today was a, is a busy day for us. So I actually got in the office a little bit early at 6.30. I wrote all my notes for my appraisals. So I write notes on each one of them, so I'm fully prepared, make sure I've got everything I need so any question that gets asked, we've got, you know, a full toolkit of, um, you know, of armor to you know, answer any questions. But so I'm really in tune with 
who I'm speaking to, I've, at 7.25, 7.30, I confirmed all of them, all the appraisals. One of them, they had the time wrong. So I was, it's now booked in for 8 o'clock tomorrow, so it's one less one. So I've confirmed all my appointments. They probably expect someone else to con- call and confirm, but I'm in the office at 7.30. That in itself is a part of why people will use us. And um, I don't know anyone in Sydney, probably more so in Noosa, that people get up quite early. But so they like that. They like the fact that we're well planned. And, and, and so my day's fully set up. And then we sold a house in Bondi last night. So we, I started making calls around that from 7.45. Then I went out you know, to a buy appointment and appraisals from there till 6 o'clock tonight. I don't, uh, I'm not, I, the latest I'll work to is 6.30. I don't do appraisals generally after 3 or 4. Sure, sure. And that's responding to your marketplace, which has the flexibility to do appraisals and things during the day, I imagine. Yeah, probably more so now with COVID, but, you know, I find late at night I've got a low strike rate probably because I'm low energy because I'm more of a morning person and I'm switched off, I'm tired, I'm hungry, and I just I know that's not going to work, so I push back on times. Is fitness and, you know, mental health part of your day as well? So, yeah, so I was up at quarter to five this morning. I actually just picked up a Peloton bike yesterday, so I got one delivered, so I was on that for half an hour today but uh you know i work out every day other than two days a week yeah i guess it's a necessity when you're maintaining that level of energy um i'll come back to your calls for just a second because i understand they're pretty short and sweet um i think uh, just over a minute per call so what sort of conversation are you having in that time how would that sound uh, because my calls generally they know me so it's not like i have to go into all the you know trying to build reports already being done and, um you know, like one this morning, I left a message for a guy called John Musker who lives in the street of the one in Bondi. I sold just saying, hi, John, just wanted to let you know we sold Ben and Beck's house across the road for 4.35. Just want to keep you up to date. Just sort of also give you a market forecast for the year. Give me a call whenever you're free. So like they, I might, I might speak to them or leave messages for them. I don't say, oh, give me a call because half the time I never call back. I actually leave the, the purpose for the message. And there's a real purpose to try and get that. The, the main reason what you're trying to do is that vendor goes, shit, that's a big price. Maybe we should sell. You know, like it's, but it's the repetitiveness of it. And you're not pushy saying, oh, can I get a buy through or you're ready to sell. Like it's, I know that I do this so often. And so, you know, that nine out of 10 will call me to go and come and look at their house when they're ready. Yeah. yeah. So it's more um, giving them relevant information they can benefit from. Um, and, and then when they're ready, you're their, their preferred choice. They might get a price check from another agent, but ideally you're in there and you've secured the listing without any competition. That's ideally where we want to get our business to, which is very hard. Those ones where you go up against five or six agents are too, you know, too time consuming. Do you have any tips for agents who might be hesitant to pick up the phone or struggling to do so? Um, to think in the back of your head that you're offering a service and if they don't want that service they hang up on you, go the next one. Like You're there to help them out. So, you know, those where they rude to you or whatnot, just fob it off and go on to the next call. The more calls you do, the, the more momentum you build, the, the better banter you get as well. Like if you're just starting out, it's all, it's all doing it, you know, repetitively and you've got to like it though. If you don't like it, don't do it, you know, because it, it'll be sh- – proven in your voice and and the way you talk to people they're going to hear it like people can tell if i'm tired over the phone or i'm distracted doing something else so i think it's really important that you want to do it and you like it and and you get that you're going to get pushed back and you got to have in your head that you're there to benefit them and it's not personal it's just it's just life yeah exactly yeah. <clears throat> other than the telephone what sort of other tools do you use to, to help you maintain your volume and um service um, email newsletters, um, you know, we use our database extremely well. Um, text messages now, we've just started when we sell properties, we text everyone that's been through, plus call the, all the standout hot sellers. Uh, you know, social media, we're, we're quite big on. Letterbox drops, we're still big on. Um, open houses, running good opens, callbacks, all the sort of basic factors of real estate, I think we do well, like really well, and, and we, we don't sort of put too many layers on it and make it convoluted. Excellent. And I'd like to come back to your team because you mentioned that you can't do what you do without them. How big is your team at the moment? No, there's six of us in total and, you know, they've all got designated roles and 
um, yeah, we're obviously high volume. We you know we could probably do it with a couple more team members, but you know the, the 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 volume that we do would be probably someone that would have ten in their team. I reckon it, it is, is how well oiled it is and managed it is and process driven it is. So we're it's high pace, but it works it works well. We've got good synergy. And what's your role within the team? Your specific task to manage the team. You know, in, in a good way, like it's that we're directing, you know, what, how do we do this? How do we change that? You know, this vendor's got a problem. What do we need to do to get back on track? Um, uh, listing mainly, um, dealing with vendors, negotiating, you know, the, you know the, the basic foundations of real estate. Sure. And and so nothing's changed. I still do all the, all the day-to-day running of what an agent should be doing. Sure. Um, And key to your team, of course, is Prue Kelly, who's been with you. She is your executive assistant, and you've mentioned before she's been with you for 10 years. When is the right time to bring on an assistant? Immediately. I think once you're doing – if you've made the commitment to be in real estate and you've just come from a property management background or a junior agent, I think the minute you got some accountability, it drives you. And that's what sort of drove me is that I knew I had to feed other people and – you know, if I'm not in the office setting an example at 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning, that they're going to drop off too. And that's what happens when I go away. They just sort of naturally slow up a little bit. So it makes, I think it makes you accountable and you've got someone to, to help grow and learn and, and whatnot. So I think I wouldn't hold back. You know, and any, I can't think of anyone who has said, I wish I, oh, I didn't put that assistant on. I've always wished I did it earlier. And what does Prue allow you to do um, unencumbered? Like, how does she assist you? I don't do any marketing. I don't proof any marketing. I don't deal with vendors, pushbacks, and I don't like photos. It can come back out. I don't deal with solicitors. Um, like, it's, you know, it allows – I don't proof anything. I just I just see the – I don't even look at the link because I know it's done right. There's some agents spend an hour on each property proofing the photos. Like, it's a, you know, a waste of time. And what are the key attributes that you look for in your team members and, and staff? Good culture. Um, the, you know, they've got to have – everyone says they're hungry, which most people aren't. They say that to get a job. Um, and I look for someone that's in it for like a 10-year, five to 10-year period before you really start going out on your own. The, the ones that want to do it quick and easy generally don't – you know, they're in it for a short, short time they're out. Sure, sure. I'd like to also now touch on your database. I read that you sell approximately 50% of properties through your database. What are your top tips for creating and maintaining a database that achieves the results like that? Having hit list of buyers, dealing with those buyers. We've got a photo shoot in 20 minutes where I've called hot you know, buyers, buyers agents at the photos are there. We'll have offers on the table even before it goes on the market tomorrow. But those buyers are sellers as well. Um, we've serviced them. We're servicing the vendors. Um, you know, we're, we, 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 so we, 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 we know who the best ones are and you hold on to them. Not, they don't necessarily need to have something to sell, but they've got to buy. They're, 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 you know, they're on our hit list. Excellent. And if uh, I were an agent starting out, what would be the top three tips that you would give me to achieve a career with success like yours? Um, think long-term. Have, again, great product knowledge um, and, and continually learn and build and maintain a database. Excellent. And understand why you build a database, yeah. I'll quickly turn to the market in Sydney. You mentioned before that it is changing. What are you seeing on the ground at the moment? Lots of inquiries but aren't translating to big open house numbers, price reductions, urgency dropping, uncertainty, um, back to a normal marketplace, I would say. And what are the primary skills that an agent needs in a market that is shifting like that? Vendor management. Okay. And when, yeah. when we talk vendor management, what's a good example of how that goes? Yeah, multiple offers in writing, vendor weekly vendor reports, daily calls, um, emailing articles, uh, just ramping up the, the communication with them. Excellent. And what's next for the Alexander Phillips team in 2022? Um, hopefully beat, beat last year, which I don't think would happen. Uh, will happen. It would be, it'd be great. We did 266 sales last year. So um, just continually do what we do and uh, enjoy it day in, day out. Fantastic. And finally, we ask this question of all our podcast guests. What last piece of advice or key takeaway would you like to leave our listeners with today? 
I think work out what you you love about real estate, and if and you, if you keep doing that, like if you you got to work out what you're good at, and com and continually build on that, and if you work hard, the the listings will come after that. Alexander, that's fantastic advice. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Elevate podcast. With thanks to connectnow.com.au. Don't forget to get access to all of Elite Agent's premium resources, including a detailed episode guide for this podcast. Visit joinelitagent.com.